Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Danny Bimmel. This is Chris Drives. We cover everything at Mills and Prayers related, and our show is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You'll get all your hockey necessities, all your referee gear for you figure skaters. You can go there and get your ice skates sharpened. Or new skates. Yeah. Uh, you can also get NHL jerseys from all teams in the Midwest. You can get Admiral jerseys like the ones we're currently wearing. You can get jersey customizations. If you go there into the store, you should tell them that we sent you. Yeah, keep Just on. so that way they know that we're uh, living up to our end of the deal. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were nice enough to sponsor us. Yeah, a year... Speaking of which, Daniel, we have to talk about something after this. Yeah, I know. You already know what I'm about to say to you, huh? Yeah, I already know. Okay. I, I, I All right, know. cool. We don't have to talk to you. <laughs> yep. You guys don't need to know what we were talking about. Yes, we are still looking for more sponsors. So if any of you have a small business or or want to get a, a non-profit that you run out there, um, we start as low as 75 bucks and go as expensive as 250 so we're cheap and affordable. <laughs> and obviously, if you're a Fortune 500 company, it's going to cost you. But we know what you're worth. Yeah. But uh, and we do also know what we're saying. Yeah, we also know, we also can allow, uh, we also are a tax write-off. So that's another upside for, for people. Wait, what, really? We're a charity? Uh, technically, we are entertainment, which is a tax write-off for any business or nonprofit. Holy crap. Or technically a sponsor, so it's a nonprofit tax write-off. Because they're not making okay, money. Okay, okay, start talking hockey. <laughs> okay, so as far as hockey goes, we're going to talk about the Admirals and Rockford Ice Hogs here. That was a heck of a game last night. We had a lot of fun there. Uh, yeah, that's why this is uh, Wednesday instead of Tuesday, because we were actually in Rockford for last night's game. Um, and uh, thank you to Bessie and Ruth and their family for getting us tickets. Uh, awesome seats, you guys. Thank you very much. I had a blast. They are uh, Rockford season ticket holders. Awesome people. Uh, we can't thank them enough. And uh, anytime they need the favor returned, it is. Not to mention, they were welcome. one of the first people we got to know when we uh, started going down there. Yeah, we went there for a Rockford versus the Manitoba Moose. game, and that's when we met them in the smoking section. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Panther Arena. They got a smoking section. What about you? Yeah. All right, so let's get into this game before he goes on a rant about not being able to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, this game was really good. Rockford literally came out to play last night. Like, their defense was on point, and they made it really difficult for the Admirals. You noticed that, dude. They were playing really good defense. They uh, got away with a lot of hooking calls that I saw that should have been called, but the referees were clearly blind. But they did play good defense. On the other hand, the Admirals, uh, they seem to shoot the puck at themselves more than the goalie because they've gotten their own way a bunch of times. I can't, I can't I've lost count how many times an Admiral player got in the line of a shot for his uh, teammate with the puck. Are you going to add to it, or were you not even watching the game? You were just there. Well, I was going to say that uh, the goaltender for Rockford came to, definitely came to play and set uh, Rockford Icehawks franchise record with 55 saves. Yeah. Which leads into your category. Okay, this one was kind of funny. Um, as far as shots on goal, all right, Milwaukee out, uh, outshot Rockford 19-12 to 12 in the first period. 19-2. Or 19-2. And then they outshot Rockford 12-9 in the second period. Then in the third period, they outshot Rockford 25-2 in the third period. And all the Admirals could muster up was one measly goal. A penalty or power play was a Milwaukee 0 for 6. No surprise. Rockford 1 for 3. Eh. Kind of a lucky bounce by the, by for them in yeah, that case. Uh, yeah, the Admirals, what, four infractions for 11 minutes? How can it be 0 for 6 if those four infractions? Is I'm, that because of that one fighting or those two fighting things? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm confused by that, so I'm not even going to say that, but Milwaukee was 0 for 6, Rockford was 1 for 3 in the power play. All right, go. Oh, wait. The, uh, Rockford had seven infractions. 
Yeah, but Milwaukee had four of 11 minutes, and Milwaukee was 0 for 6 on the power play. How does that work? We only had four penalties. Rockford had seven, so they... Ah, so, they were, so the referees were trying to help Milwaukee, and Milwaukee couldn't get out of their own way. Gotcha. All right. Because like I said, the puck bounced off of Admiral players more than it did the goalie. But the goalie did play good. Um, scoring in the second period, because there was none in the first, was uh, Brendan Hagel, his eighth with an assist from Philip Kurashev, Philip Kurashev and Ben Hughes. Warned you guys about Hagel. Um, and Lucas Craig, who's on a two-game goal streak, scored his second of the year with an assist from Jeremy Davies, his 10th, and Laurent Dauphin, his 9th. Yeah. And then in overtime, Anton Whedon scored his 5th with an assist from Ben Hughes, his 2nd, and Jacob Nielsen, his 7th. Yeah. Um, three stars of the game were all from Rockford. Uh, ben, Brandon Hagel, a goal, Anton Whedon, a goal, and... Kevin Lincoln in 55 saves on 56 shots. Um, Connor Ingram stopped 12 of 14. Um, his save percentage is going to definitely take a hit, but that's not his fault. I mean, you can't really blame a guy if you're only getting shot on like two times a period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, get, you get a little stiff back there, bored. Um, and that for, like I said, it was a good, it was good uh, defensive play by. Robert now Hill. watch this, cause you're about to hear something. Uh -oh. BMO Harris Bank Center attendance: two thousand four hundred and seven people. Are you sure there was only two thousand? It looked like about one thousand. Rockford had a crappy turnout last night, but even their fans say that their team's been getting lousy uh, attendance. Uh, yeah. It was loud, but it was bad attendance. Well, they have a good arena and. They do echo a bit when they get all noisy in there. Yeah. Um, referees were, um, um, I don't like this one. It's Sean Davis. He has been on my, uh, I hate you list for almost. Your crap list, you mean? Uh, no, I actually hate the man. He's been on that list for like a decade now. All right, now let's keep going. And Jake Runicki. Uh, linesmen were Travis Toomey and Mike Daltrey. Um, so far this year, the uh, Admirals are two or one zero oh, and two or one zero oh, and one against Rockford. Uh, the Admirals have not lost in Rockford in regulation since 2017. That's a good thing. Um. That was fun listening to the Ice Hog fans talk about how uh, shocked at uh, how good the Admirals are they are. Yeah, they were, like, all of them were coming up to us like, you guys are having a really good year. Right. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Um, also, that was good to see all those Admiral fans in attendance yesterday. Yeah. We was, stopped and said hi to a few of them. Yep, and a few employees as well. I only saw one. Uh, there were two. Oh, because I only saw one Admiral employee. Kind of hard to miss an Admiral employee when they're wearing the same jersey as us. Just saying. All right. Um, Admirals play on Friday. And all the Chicago Wolves. Yep. Um, at the Panther Arena here in Milwaukee. Yep. All fans will get a 2020 uh, Admirals 50th anniversary calendar. So, um... I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I, I got that curious. It's going to have old school photos of all. With a mix there of an old school with a mix of new school. Yeah, probably like 30 pictures of Pecker and Anner. Because, you know, people are so in love with Pecker. Well, he does hold the Admiral's record for all time wins. Yeah. Also holds the Predator's record for all time wins. You done drooling about Pekka? No, I'm just You being... just proved my point. I'm not <laughs> no. saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying people drool over Pekka Rene. They do. All right, so on to our next game, which has absolutely nothing to do about Pekka Rene. Nope, because this was a juicy game. If you catch my uh, drip. Yeah. What? There was Hey, hey you're the, you're Mr. Try to get clever of your segues. I was trying to get clever of mine. Don't give me that crap. All yeah. right, so uh, the the Priors played the Sharks last night. I know they Sharks. I know we're a day late. Um, I have a I, I I meant to go on the page last night and apologize. I just said at the beginning of the video we were in Rockford. I know that just got us off the hook. They know we were at a road game yesterday. 
Yeah, we were dead tired when we got back last night. Yeah, wasn't night. it like almost midnight by the time we got back? Because the traffic, for whatever reason, was bad getting to Rockford. And, and then it, uh, it was just late and we were tired of getting back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it got us off the hook. I said we were at Rockford last night. <laughs> yeah. And see, I covered our tracks. I just said we were at the game. Not to mention, we checked into the arena on our page. All right, so on to the... Uh, Stats versus the Sharks. Um, do you want me to read them? <laughs> I think I could read. Uh, you think? Uh, shots on goal were uh, 32-25 Predators. Uh, Face-off percentage was 63% uh, Predators, 37 San Jose. Uh, San Jose was 0 for 4 on the power play. Nashville was 1 for 7. Uh, penalty minutes. 39 for the Sharks and the Predators, 33. What am I missing? And then block shots, 14, 10 for the uh, Sharks, and then giveaways were 8 4 for the Predators. Did you do How hits? How the hell are there that many penalty minutes? Did you do hits? What? Did you do hits? Hits were, oh, hits were 21 7 in favor of the Sharks. Did I skip that? Yes, you did. <laughs> Probably because I got blown away by seeing 39 penalty minutes for the Sharks and 33 for the Predators. What the hell did we miss last night? Apparently, from what I, what, uh, I read, it was... Yeah. What did Robert not tell us? Yeah. Because he was our correspondent covering the Predators for us yesterday. I should have asked him what was up with the penalty. Well, let's see. We've got Sorensen for unsportsmen like Conduct. How many minutes does that get you? Two. Fight. Oh, Austin Watson had a fight with Evander Kane. Oh, I wish I could have saw that fight. Watson versus Kane. It wasn't good. Oh. Uh, it was just a lot of dumb penalties from the looks of it. Okay, that's a lot of penalty minutes. 30 min 39 for the Sharks. Uh, Watson had 15 penalty minutes. Ouch. So, Austin Watson was half of that. Well, a little less than half. Evander Kane had 19. Okay, okay. So, out of that... It must have been a pretty bad fight or something. Whatever. I right, start reading. Your turn. All there right. was nothing in the first and second period from what I'm seeing. Nope, it was all in the third. So Seriously? scoring in the third was Nick Benino with his 12th, with an assist from uh, Mikel Granlin, his 8th, and Craig Smith, his 7th, and then Ryan Johansson scored on the power play with his 5th, with an assist from Forsberg, his 9th, and Yarncroc, his 10th. Then Timo Meyer for the Sharks scored his 10th, with an assist from Hurdle, his 14th, and Kevin LeBlanc, LeBanc, his 10th. Then, I uh, call him LeBlanc. Uh, Until I hear confirmation otherwise. Uh, then we had Cal Yarncroft with an empty netter with his 11th with an assist from Forsberg, his 10th, and Yossi, his 19th. In the last seven games, the Predators are 4, 1, and 2. What about their last 10? They lost those. Huh? They, that was what during that losing streak. That don't count. Yeah, it does. <laughs> 4, 4, and 2. <laughs> Yeah, seven games sounds better. In the last seven games, the Preds have... Well, is it like 4-4-1-1 four, four, one one, or 4-4-0-2? Four, four, oh, or what is it? Because, you know, you got two different types of overtimes. you got overtime and shootout. I think it was just overtime. Oh, okay. Well, either way. Yeah, they're playing pretty well lately. They're not going down without a fight in this, this central division, which is stacked. It always is. This is the toughest division to win, and that's coming from a guy who's followed it since... Day one? Yeah, day one. And yeah, sure. I remember when Detroit was in our division. Yeah, I remember that, too. Yeah, we had never a chance of winning the division when they were here. Oh, duh. It's now, different. if they were here, they'd be at the bottom. Kind of like uh, Minnesota. Actually, right now, Chicago's there. Let's not talk about the Blackhawks. You might anger the Rockford fans. I'm not trying to anger the Rockford fans. Rockford's team's in Chicago. That's <laughs> why I'm saying quit angering the Rockford fans by talking crap about the Blackhawks. All right, well, anyway, uh, in that four, San Jose was Martin Jones. He stopped 29 to 31 with a point nine three five save percentage. In net for the Predators was UC Soros. 
Uh, he stopped 24 out of 25 with a .960 save percentage and one goal against. I um, think I know why people like us, because they like hearing us argue. <laughs> All right, our referees were Peter McDougal and... Wait, what was his name? Peter McDougal. <laughs> McDougal. I like that. Uh, and Steve Kazari. Uh, linesman was uh, uh, Steve Barton and Derek Amel. Uh, head coach for San Jose is Peter DeBoer. Head coach for Nashville is Peter LaViolette. Uh, scratches for San Jose were uh, Lane Bergman, uh, Radosika. And uh, Lucas Rodal. Uh, Nashville was uh, Yannick Weber and Yakov Trenin. So we'll see. Oh, duh, I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. Sure. <laughs> you said it. Sure. <laughs> I was about to ask a stupid question, but I corrected myself before the stupid question came out. So shut up. Um, I would like to throw a thank you to our last, our, our next opponent for doing us a favor. Uh oh. How dare you thank the Wolves? I was referring. Admiral Fain, you better get on them. I was you actually. Just our enemy. I was thanking the Sabres for beating the St. Louis Blues. Oh, five to two. Okay. Nice backpedal. No nice segue into the preview. Eh, I suppose. The Buffalo Sabres are in 32 games are 15, 11, and 6. They have in their last 10 are 5, 2, and 3, and they are on a two game win streak. Currently, the Predators have worked themselves um, into. Yeah, what's, uh, what's uh, uh, Buffalo's record in the last 10? Uh, 5, 2, and 3. Alright, cool. Because you already covered a win streak, so you just saved me uh, some work. This is uh, going to be their very first meeting with Nashville this season. Uh, it is in Buffalo, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Correct. So, 7 o'clock on the East. Yep. All right, I can get rid of that. <laughs> You're like, thanks. <laughs> cool. All right. Now, as far as their lines go, all right, they're... First line of Victor Olofsson, Jack Eichel, and Sam Reinhardt. Uh, Olofsson, he has 12 goals, 16 assists. Uh, Eichel has 20 goals, 24 assists. And uh, Reinhardt has 13 assists and 12 goals. That top line for them this year has been on fire. Uh, their second line, uh, Jimmy Vesey, he has 3 goals, 6 assists. Oh. Uh, Marcus Johansson, he has five goals and eight assists. And then Rasmus Asplund, he has one goal, two assists. That was so hard to say his last name, Asplund. Ugh, tongue twister. All right, anyways, for their defense here, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, one goal, 15 assists. Colin Miller, one goal, four assists. The second defensive pairing, Brandon Montatur. Uh, two goals, seven assists, and Rasmus Ristolainen, two goals, 12 assists. Basically, those two lines on defense and offense, that's about all you got to worry about. Because like, if you look at the third line of defense, uh, what is this, Henry, Joka, Haru. Yoki Haru, and uh, it should be uh, Jake Haka, uh, uh, Jaka Haru, he has Yoki six Haru. assists and three goals. And then uh, Maccabi. Or whatever, uh, five McKay. assists and two goals. So I wouldn't really worry about Buffalo. Um, hell, we know a Buffalo Sabres fan, and even he's kind of embarrassed by his team. Uh, but, Jeff Skinner in the third line, he has 11 goals, seven assists. Uh, Casey Middlestat, uh, he has four goals, five assists. And then Connor Sheary, four assists and five goals. Honestly, uh... Nashville should beat them. That's really all you got to look out for. Uh, cover the goalie. What? As you know, you do sometimes like this team. Keyword sometimes. Um, actually, it is um, when before the Priors came into the league, I grew up a Sabres fan. So um, he has family there. Yep, I have family in Buffalo. Uh, still have family in Buffalo. Still pay attention to their sports teams. Um, I don't have the passion and drive for them, but that's because I. Of what I do here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, they're starting goalie. They've kind of done a split squad between Linus Olmark and Carter Hutton. As Linus. 
You said Lena. You said Linus Omar. I've done the research. I'm sorry. All right. Well, Linus Omar has played nine games, or has played 17 games, nine wins, six losses, two overtime losses, with a 2.83 goals against average and a .915 save percentage. Carter Hutton, on the other side, has not done so well. He has six wins, five losses, four overtime losses, with a 3.05 goals against average and a .910 save percentage. They're getting points, it's just... Seems like they keep getting in their own way. So what do you think Buffalo's biggest issue is, given their positioning in the division? Ownership. <laughs> I literally well, have said that for a where's decade. Sta- hey, where's Buffalo stand in their division? Uh, they are currently... I'm not asking you because you can... Uh, they're only behind Boston, but I had a... Boston's, board. like, beating everyone. And apparently uh, Brad Marchand's uh, playing pretty effing well this year. And he on pace for like 50 goals? Yeah. Like how is that effing? Uh, the only team better than them in the league right now is the Washington Duh, Capitals. it's the Washington Ovechkins. Get it right. But he's on pace to have like 50 as well. Have you not been paying attention to the great A 